Chris Skidmore, uh, former uh, energy uh, minister and also I was chair of the UK's uh, Net Zero Review. So I would say that private sector engagement on net zero and the energy transition is absolutely critical. It won't happen without private sector engagement. The government doesn't really need to, to prioritise this. I think they can do this on several levels. One is to focus sectorally on key areas of growth to demonstrate that they are working hand in glove you know, with those organisations. So for Tech UK, a you know, fantastic organisation that represents climate tech organisations as well as a number of other tech organisations that will be relevant to the energy transition. You know, it's really important to engage with these organisations. Secondly, the transition isn't just going to happen in London or in Whitehall and Westminster. You've got to get out there. When I did the Net Zero Review, I met with uh, a thousand companies holding 52 round tables. We took evidence from another 1,800. So that early stage engagement, making sure that companies feel they've got a sense of ownership in the transition that's not being done to them is I think really important. And they're far more likely to take on board the policies and accelerate them uh, at scale. It's a question I'm really interested in yeah, because we're going to have to think about 2030, not 2050 for net zero. And the private sector already has some of the solutions in place. What we need to do is take those solutions as best practice and scale them up across the rest of the country. So let's not try and reinvent the wheel. Let's not try to come up with endless consultations. Let's identify what, what is working in the private sector now and ensure that other organisations and companies can adopt that rapidly and provide the support for them to do so. So the Labour government stood on a manifesto of ensuring that its green industry's mission was one of its five top priorities. Uh, and this is absolutely right that they should do so. Uh, I would say when it comes to looking at mission-based approaches, making sure you take that long-term approach that you understand you've got to provide certainty and clarity to the private sector, to the businesses to be able to then come and invest in uh, the energy transition net zero is, is really uh, important. We've seen certainty around uh, on the energy side, so around the establishment of mission control, about committing to a 2030 net zero grid. We've seen certainty on climate leadership internationally with the appointment of a new climate uh, special representative in Rachel Kite. We still need to see certainty around other areas of the net zero transition, on buildings, on transport, on agriculture. You know, let's see you know, what is the commitments that are going to be made where do we need the legislation, regulation, if at all, and how can we ensure that comes early enough in this parliament so that we're not waiting too long before we get back into another sort of general election cycle. So yeah, we're halfway there with some of the announcements that have been made, we still need more clarity around how to deliver on net zero across the whole of society. So I think on these pressures short term, obviously everyone talks about tax, spend, you know, investment, and there's a real opportunity to, to reset the dial, to rethink about how you know, net zero is something that isn't just being done for sustainability reasons. There are plenty uh, of examples of infrastructure, uh, whether it's uh, electric vehicles, whether it's boilers, you know, things that are just going to date and get old and need to be replaced. Let's not replace like with like, let's replace with something that is going to be more efficient is going to actually be more affordable in the long run because it's going to give people more money in their pockets because it's going to be cheaper to run. Let's make that case and let's provide incentives both in the tax system, not just through grants. I think the challenge is sometimes government says, here's a grant scheme, let's you know, deliver you know, new boilers, let's deliver sort of you know, decarbonisation through schemes. I would like to see a wider uh, opening up of the tax system that would ensure that when it came to you know, renovations, repairs, that they would be uh, zero rated uh, on VAT. And I think that you know, we could be looking at how we can offset on, in the tax system other areas around the net zero transition uh, for the future. And then to just relentlessly make the case that you know, we, we, the earlier we spend and make the, you know, the investment that's needed, it's going to not only save us money in terms of being more efficient, productive, use less energy, it's also going to cost less you know, in the longer term because things only become more expensive. Uh, so that early uh, intervention is yeah, really uh, critical for me. And, and then identifying actually where we can have quick wins, uh, demonstrate the retail side, some of these policy uh, interventions is, is really important. But again, yeah, you're absolutely right to say it's, it's a long-term process. We need to make sure there's certainty, we need a plan. We need to have roadmaps in place for sectors. We need to, when it comes to looking at R&D, have an investment roadmap so people know where the government stands. The worst thing we can do is the government can chop and change and then no one knows what to invest in. 
So ensuring that we've got long-term certainty is absolutely critical. It's been great to be here at Tech UK's Net Zero conference. It's really important that organizations like Tech UK have the opportunity to bring the sector together, the climate se tech sector together, to be able to discuss policy uh, barriers, uh, challenges, and also opportunities. I think sometimes too many conferences around climate tech are focusing on the investor space. You know, this has been a great opportunity to focus on policy detail, what needs to happen uh, for the future. And congratulations also to Tech UK for uh, establishing a, a climate tech uh, all-party group, which would be a fantastic addition to the policy uh, landscape.